Welcome to the first webinar in the Dental Fusion IT series. My name is Derek Watson and I'm going to be your presenter. I'm a dentist with a keen interest in information technology and over the next six weeks I hope to transmit some of that enthusiasm to you. In this course I will aim to cover the computer skills required to increase your personal and business productivity. It has been designed for professionals working in primary dental care but most of the material will be useful to any small to medium business owner. All that I'm going to assume is that you know how to turn a computer on. The system I will be using is Windows based, however the principles apply to all systems. I'm going to show you how to use a variety of software programs, but there are free versions of everything that I'm going to show you and I will tell you where you can obtain them. Let's have a look at what we're going to cover in this first webinar. We're going to start with word processing and email, the two basics of any job that involves computers. Before we start, I'd like to say a few words about your working environment. Please try not to use a mouse. If you do, you will develop tendonitis or carpal tunnel syndrome, and this will manifest itself in later life as numbness and weakness in your arms at night, and particularly when you're holding them in the air doing things like painting a wall. You can avoid this by using a tablet or a trackball. Using a tablet very quickly becomes second nature and it is quicker than using a mouse in any case. Another useful tip is to use a two monitor setup. Most modern graphics cards have two outputs and it will greatly increase your productivity if you are not constantly having to swap between open windows on a single monitor. You can also get free eye tests from your employer if you work with computers. And these are essential because as you get older, your depth of focus will decrease and you may need one or two pairs of glasses for long and short distances. If you are constantly trying to focus on a computer screen, which is slightly outside your depth of view, you will get headaches. This is Windows Explorer and it shows you how the files and folders are stored on your computer or server. Understanding where your files are is essential if you're not to lose the family photo album or your patient's clinical data. This is a window onto our DFO server and you can see that it contains a mixture of files. You can view your files in a number of ways. The most useful are as icons, particularly if you're dealing with pictures, as a list, if you're dealing with a lot of files, and in the detailed view, if you're looking, for example, for the most recent version of a document, you can resize the columns and sort the files by clicking at the top of each column, in this case from A to Z or from Z to A. There are several ways to create a copy of a file. For example, if you're going to change it and you want to be able to come back to the original if everything goes wrong, the simplest way is to select it and then press Ctrl C to create a copy and then Ctrl V to put that copy back in the original folder. Ctrl C and Ctrl V are key combinations that are valid in almost every program and you'll be using them all the time. If you want to create a new folder, then right click and you will get a context menu which depends on what you had selected when you clicked. You can select new and then folder and a new folder will be created waiting for you to name it. To move a file into this folder, just click and drag it. To open the folder, double click on it and we can see where the file has gone. If you want to rename a file, then you can click it once, wait a second and then click it again and it will wait for its new name. Another way of doing this is simply pressing F2. I am going to move that file back to the original folder. If you drag a file within the same drive, it will move but if you drag it to another drive, then it will make a copy. 
You can force a file to move to a different drive by holding down the Shift key as you drag it. You can also quickly create a copy of a file by control dragging it and a shortcut to a file by alt dragging it. Here is a typical word processing job, creating a media release. Moving around paragraphs is as simple as clicking and dragging until they are selected and then dropping them where you want them. You can select a word with a double click. You can select a sentence with a control click and you can select a paragraph with a triple click. To select from the cursor to the end of the line, press Shift End. And from the cursor to the start of the line, press Shift Home. Anything that you select will be deleted when you start typing. It's not necessary to delete anything that you're going to type over. If I select this word and start typing, you will see that it is replaced with what I type. Learning a few simple selection keys will save an awful lot of delete, 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 delete. Two more useful keys are Control B for bold and Control I for italic, or strong and emphasis as they are now called. I'm going to apply the style Heading 1 to the title and the style Strong to the seminar subheadings. You can select multiple lines by control clicking. The importance of using styles is that if you alter the style once, then it is updated everywhere it appears, which saves a lot of typing. Let's insert a picture. From the desktop. You can also do this by dragging a picture into your document. And lastly, let's create a hyperlink to our registration page. I'm going to open the registration page for the IT webinars. This blue part is the bit we're after, the URL or web address. So I'll press Control C to copy that and close the page. Now returning to Word we have the text which is going to have the hyperlink highlighted. I press Control K, paste the web address into the address box and click OK. And you'll see that that text has now become a hyperlink. And you can test this by Control clicking on it and making sure that it opens the correct web page. Now if I'm going a bit too fast for you, don't forget that you can pause and rewind this as much as you like. We can save this document in many formats, but the main ones are Word format, PDF format, which is best for sending files to people if you're not sure what computer or software they have to read it, and open document text or ODT, which is supported by other programs like OpenOffice. So File, Save As, and the Word document format is pre-selected, but we can also save it as PDF or ODT. You can download OpenOffice, and for most people, it is an excellent substitute for Microsoft Office and absolutely free of charge. Well, that brings me to the end of part one, 
and I look forward to seeing you in part two to talk about how to set up your email.